Indians share my idea with you. Though my subject is little out of place, it's E and M governance in healthcare. I would like to touch on few basic things which I think is not less important than E and M governance. What is healthcare? Healthcare is one human being taking care of another human being. My association with healthcare is of last 45 years as a doctor. I am a neurophysician. I work in the northeast part of India. That's a very underdeveloped area. I have been working for development of healthcare services in that part of the country. And during last almost for 27 years of my working life, I have developed two super specialty hospitals, which are state of the art, the pioneering hospitals of that region. Financially success, also service wise. But I am a very hap unhappy and disturbed man. Having two hospitals, being established in one of the most difficult areas of the country, I'm not happy. I always feel I could not do things which I wanted to do. What is the cause of that unhappiness? If I look at the healthcare scenario all over the country, I find that during last 40, 45 years, a lot of private hospitals have come up. But 80% of the people of this country cannot go there because of the cost. On the other hand, the public hospital where I had worked earlier, including All India Institute of Medical Sciences, are unable to bear the burden of patients, that is 80% of the people who cannot access private health care because of the economic condition. As a result, there is lack of quality assurance in the public hospital because they are not able to manage the crowd. Where is the solution? Can we combine quality as well as affordability, both in the public as well as in the private sector? Three presidents of America during last two and a half decades have tried their level best to find a solution to the problem. Leave aside the other developing countries, including India. There was no shortcut ready-made answer to the problem. Then what do we do? We decided to go back to the community and relook the problem in a different way, just to see if I can find an answer to this problem. We decided to go back to the community two years ago. We did not want to go bare hand. We created a hospital on which we come on diagnostic equipment so that the community feels closer to us, opens up and talks to us because we are also providing them some help at their doorstep. Our interaction in the community was uh, emerging. We touched about 100,000 lives through our interactions we found out that 99% of the people for their medical problem actually do not need hospitalizations or admissions. They can be treated as an OPD patient. They can be treated as an OPD patient. We also try to understand what their problems are, what kind of doctors should be needed, what kind of technology is needed to treat them, and what kind of hospital they would like to stay in and also look at the community, what kind of money they can spend, not what is available in the market. Based on the understanding from the community, we started designing a hospital, having lots of brainstorming exercise with the hospital planners and designer. A hospital was created by involving the local community. They constructed the building. We tried to use the local materials, and as a result, we could com complete the project nine months ahead of schedule. It was supposed to be completed in two and a half years. We did it in 21 months. It could have been four months earlier because with the flood and rain, we could not work in Assam for four months' time. Otherwise, it could have been done even much earlier by involving the local community. We also tried to use the local material as much as possible. We made it an eco-friendly green hospital, and for probably for the first time in the country, this would be a 
gold certified green building in India, a hospital which is eco friendly. Then the when the hospital was completed, we first we realized that for accident and emergency problem, our people do not give money for health care. It comes without any warning. They have no time to get ready for it with money. But initial two to three hours is the golden time for treating any medical emergency or accident victim. We decided to make it free in our hospital just to see what happens, whether we become successful or not. So all patients, irrespective of rich and poor, we treat in that hospital free of charge for initial 24 hours, including medicine, including CT scan, X-ray, ECG, whatever they need to save their lives. We started providing free transport to the patients in order to make it easy to come to the hospital for their OPD care, outpatient care. For emergency services, of course, there are services of 108. Also, we have ambulance, which brings patients without any cost. The OPD services are very, very nominal. Doctors' consultation fee for surgeon, physician, pediatrician, obstetrics, and gynecology, CNPI, is only 60 rupees. We are doing good and planning to do a with from 15th of August. We'll be able to run this hospital even without taking consultation fees. For the neurologist, cardiologist, and other super specialists, it was only 121, 20 rupees. I must also tell you that there is no registration fees separately, as you see in most of the private hospital. We do MRI at 2,500 almost equal to even lower than some of the public hospitals. We do CT scan at 900. We do blood sugar at 21 rupees. We do x-ray at 60 rupees. Even after doing that, in less than six months time, we are able to recover almost 90% of our operational cost. We borrowed this money from the bank. We did not get any grant or contributions from anybody. It's not a hospital, not for profit. We will have to earn profit because I have private equity investor. I must give them return on their investment at 25% IRR. But looking at the trend, this hospital will achieve break even in a time span much shorter than the so-called private corporate hospital. Because of the response of the people, the story got published in no time. It was published in 1,000 media in 10 different languages across the country, across the world. It came to the attention of Bill Gates. He commented that it's a great approach. By following simple business logic, we are able to reach and treat more and more number of India's poor. When Bill Gates tweeted it, it was read by 18 million people across the globe about this story. Not only that, another international publication commented that it's a unique frugal healthcare delivery model set to expand in India. And he commented that a newly set up hospital in the northeastern Indian state of Assam has cracked the access and pricing barrier. We could probably do that. It caught the attention of the World Bank. They came to study the model. They encouraged us by giving us a reward of 150,000 US dollar for capacity building and scaling up. They told us repeatedly, we'll handhold you, we'll support you. Would you be interested to take it outside Northeast, outside many states of, in, the, in different states of India? Would you be interested to go to Bangladesh and Myanmar, where there are so many poor people? Would you be interested to take it to African countries? <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen present, this is 
our unique experience, which I wanted to share with you. I can understand the value of your precious time. I would not like to take much of your time. You might ask me before I leave the platform how we have been able to make it possible, how the economics works. I must tell you, when this model will mature in another six to nine months' time, we may not have to charge any money for the indoor and the ICU patients, which makes people bankrupt. During my so many four and a half decades of association with healthcare services, I have seen many people from the middle class coming down to below poverty line when they get admitted. We have no control when we'll be able to release them. They have no control when they will be able to take their patient out. They sell their, they finish all their savings. They sell their all movable and immovable property. They come to the street. It's the scenario all over the world. What we are trying to do, we have inverted the pyramid. All the private hospital survives on indoor patients and ICU admissions. 85% of their revenue comes from indoor and ICU admission. So they keep patients, there is a tendency to keep patients for more than required time. Sometimes over investigate them. Not only that, in order to grab that 20% of the people who can only afford them, there is unhealthy competition amongst them. Unethical practices growing up. Not that society do not know about it. As a result, people are losing trust in the medical community very rapidly, which is a very disturbing sign. But when we inverted the pyramid, we took care of the base of the pyramid, which is the OPD patients. All our operating costs for the hospital comes from OPD patients. In six months' time, against the norm of 85% revenue from indoor patients and only 10 to 15% revenue from OPD patients, our more than 50% revenue comes from only OPD patients. And OPD patients' concentration fees is only 60 and 120 rupees. We even provide them transport. We do the investigation at ultra cost rate and the average expenditure of an OPD patient is less than 1,000 rupees, including medicine which is affordable to large majority of the people. That's what we have done. By inverting the pyramid, we are changing the dynamics of healthcare. And if we become successful, probably it will solve a big problem, not only for the Northeast, but across the whole globe. Thank you very much.